If I told you it was possible to get a million subscribers in three months, you'd call me a liar. One million! And if somehow I convinced you that it was the truth, you may be thinking this YouTuber maybe has the style of Hi, I'm Elle Mills. Or perhaps the storytelling abilities of Why did you just wave at us with one hand? Usually you wave at us with both. It's because my other hand has a cat in it. Maybe the cinematography of What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to another tutorial. Or the production resources similar to Mom and Dad left me in charge while they're gone. Well, you're wrong. This is Joanna Sedia. Guess where I am right now. I'm on the toilet. School starts tomorrow. She's a 17-year-old Canadian YouTuber that films videos with her phone. She's hit a million subscribers within three months, and frankly, no one can understand it. Joanna's videos are very reminiscent of early YouTube personalities, where the creator would just sit in front of the camera, express their thoughts, or crack a few jokes. <laughs> I'm on socialblade.com and I'm looking at this girl's profile, Joanna Sedia. She hit a million subscribers and she's only been on YouTube for three months. I've been here for three years. Welcome to Psych IRL, my name is Donna. So you guys informed me that you wanted to hear about this YouTuber named Joanna Sedia. And you guys weren't lying when you said that her growth is really interesting. And she's someone to really watch right now. I don't necessarily mean watch her content, but you guys have to watch her growth. Her growth really reminds me of early YouTube where it was easier to grow because the platform was less saturated. And so you could upload whatever you want. For second generation YouTube, it was still possible, but kind of hard. And it's kind of universally known if you watch a lot of how to grow on YouTube or best practices on YouTube videos that you have to stick with a niche and then grow your following within that niche. And once you have a sustainable following, you could upload whatever you want because you have like true fans within that niche. Tip number three when you're starting from scratch is really understanding that having a focused niche is a lot more powerful than having a general channel. The reality is if you try and reach everybody, you're gonna end up reaching nobody. But for Joanna Sedia, she's uploading whatever she wants and she's growing. She's technically breaking a lot of rules to the YouTube growth system. In my opinion, the best way to describe her content is a relatable teen girl uploading whatever she wants. She's almost the antithesis of every modern YouTube teenager on this site, making her more relatable to the average person. Oh my god, I look so ugly. Not that there's anything wrong with this style, it's just hard to relate to. Her personality is very unique in that she's weird in a very good and comedic way. She's sarcastic and sort of parodies the current state of YouTube in a lighthearted way. Her thumbnails sort of remind me of a meme or something you'd see on Snapchat or Instagram stories. She's done videos of her painting, and she's actually good. She's done thrift hauls cut her own hair on camera. My mom is gonna kill me. Vlogged and turn herself into the cookie monster. I wonder if when I apply for a job, my employers are gonna see this. What will they think? Her editing style emphasizes every joke. Okay, you know what? No negative thoughts, only positive thoughts. I cannot do this. But the video that hit YouTube's algorithm jackpot was this one called I DIY'd Emma Chamberlain's new clothing line. Hi. During this time, Emma Chamberlain had been facing some controversy with her new clothing line. Many fans claimed that what she was selling was too overpriced for the quality of merchandise they actually got. To make matters worse, the clothing in the ads were pixelated so customers couldn't quite tell what they were buying. The internet exploded with criticism for Emma Chamberlain. Every drama channel, commentary channel, had a take on the situation, and it brought in a lot of views. Joanna also shared her opinion on the drama. She did this by recreating some of the items of Chamberlain's new merchandise for much cheaper. I look like a yellow orchid. Look at this structural. This is so modern. I would high key go anywhere with this. The video was entertaining, but the growth didn't happen overnight. About a month after she posted that video, she only hit 150 subscribers. But soon after, the algorithm began 
favoring her video about Emma Chamberlain and wildly promoted it. In just three months, Joanna had reached 1 million subscribers. You know what? Don't ever underestimate the punching power of a 17-year-old teenager who weighs 100 pounds and is 5 foot 4. Okay, you're gonna need to turn on the Shane Dawson conspiracy theory music right now because there's a conspiracy going on. Everyone made an Emma Chamberlain video that was critical of Emma Chamberlain. Emma may not be a bully, but she is guilty of a far more terrible crime. YouTuber merch. Why was it that Joanna Setti's content why was it her content that hit the algorithm jackpot? How the heck did you get 300,000 subs in less than a week? I'm kind of in a little shady deal with YouTube at the moment, so I can't really talk about it. On YouTube, there are a lot of new faces. In the early days of YouTube, you may remember Shane Dawson, Michael Buckley, Lisa Nova, Dave Days. I take your money. Some of those people are still on here, but a lot of those people have disappeared. But there seem to be new faces popping up, like there was the British Invasion, O2L, Rebecca Black. What happened to Rebecca Black? It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Currently, I don't know if this is true because I'm not usually on that side of YouTube, but I think the biggest faces are Logan Paul and Jake Paul, Emma Chamberlain, the Dolan twins, James Charles. Hi, sisters! But these faces are usually used to sell whatever YouTube has to offer. YouTube movies, YouTube original series, and have you noticed that all these creators technically, maybe not Shane Dawson or PewDiePie, but they kind of do the same thing and they have the same style of content. The only thing that really separates them is their personality. And so as these creators get older, it seems like they're being replaced by someone younger, better looking, and maybe more relatable to the youth than them. What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, I think there was some human intervention. YouTube is looking for their next star, and that star is Joanna Setia. But if you're boring and just want to think about it logically, maybe the creator and audience grew up, the creator's still making the same type of content, but since the audience has grown up, they moved on to something new. There have been many conspiracy theories to how Joanna Setia had climbed up so fast up the YouTube ladder. She's been accused of botting views, though this has been proven false because if that were true, the top YouTubers would most likely end up as people who already come from wealth, people who have the most money to spend on botting views. This isn't the case. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I've tested something similar out and I've tried to game the system, and you know that it doesn't work. Also, her view count, subscriber count, and interaction are pretty consistent with each other. Sure, there was some luck involved, but perhaps her popularity is explained by why people love YouTube in the first place. It's an escape from polished and clearly crafted mainstream entertainment. Those who love YouTube want to hear opinions from real individuals. It creates this just beautiful story um, that I did not expect. I thought this might be some sort of, sort of watered-down, weak-willed version of God of War, and I found uh, Kratos to be stronger than ever because, you know, sometimes weakness can be your strength. As of recent, YouTube has become more polished. A lot of what you see is scripted to simulate reality, and and its actual purpose is entertainment and view count. It's heavy. It's very heavy. Really heavy. It's harder than I thought. Though there is nothing inherently wrong with that, viewers become bored when the platform becomes saturated with the same type of content. Viewers do want to see real, relatable people. This is what made YouTube in its beginning stages. With teenagers, it's no different. Yes, many say that variety content and becoming a personality on YouTube is dead. It is harder to succeed at, but it isn't impossible. YouTube isn't like TV where the viewer consumes whatever the medium feeds them. YouTube is a community where there is interaction between the creator and viewer, and viewer and viewer. Joanna Setia brings this back to YouTube. 
Hey everyone, I hope you liked that video. One theory that I did forget to include in the video is the most obvious and probably the one that you should know about is that Joanna Sedia and Emma Chamberlain do make the same type of content. Their editing style is similar, but one thing that they are different at is probably their personalities. So when Joanna made that video about Emma Chamberlain, she was likely attracting Emma Chamberlain fans. And since they're already so similar, they're going to subscribe to her. As usual, I'm gonna do a Q&A on Instagram 24 hours after this video is posted. So follow me there. That's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.